we remove the weight. Sorry. But if if uh, removing, we might not have, not have to remove the weight if we use separate threads. You know what I mean? Like if you put that in a grid list and ran the and ran one API call per row, wouldn't that just all work? Or no? I think this is below it. I think uh, this is like. So yeah, I think removing the weight is yeah. fine because it runs a success <laughs> action. So you don't need that. You don't actually need that uh, pause queue thing in there. Uh, that that's that that would be my approach. But I think Dorian's probably better suited for this one anyway. <laughs> What do you think, Dorian? Yeah, my method was doing the separate threads, not necessarily having to do it through a grid since they're just actions, you know, on its own anyways. But if it is locking at the function level, then yeah, it would need that weight removed. Was know, another... I think that, that weight comes from the old way we had the function. Because right now we have like mm -hmm. a callback for success and error, and we didn't used to have right. that. So you needed to pause the queue. But mm -hmm. I bet you now we could we could not pause the queue like for the main action it'd be fine. But I don't know. And Abdul was asking um, why is it taking so long? I think it's because it's actually pulling these physical stations. Is that right, Tom? So it's yeah, like right. it could so it could be API, literally offline. You know, it, it's powered off, or or maybe he's using it for a different purpose. And uh, so the API doesn't get an answer back. There's no. There's no payload. There's no, he's just sort of like, I, I'm waiting for you. And Builder has a 20 second, I think it was, I timed it one time, timeout. And so sort of early release of the UI, which is pretty simple. It's not so, you know, the, the back end's more complicated, but people are like, nothing's working. And, and then 20 seconds later, something starts showing up. And yeah. all their actions got queued and then everything <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know what to do here, you know, so. What what about doing um, client side for this, Drew? What do you think? You about can't that? because, so this is a super specific case oh, to give like right. a step back where we're querying, the, the actual API is like someone's IP address and it's a JSON P request and it's not secure data. So the way Builder works, Builder's HTTPS and there's no way uh, to do a client side API request that brings in non-secure data. It's just like a browser level thing that there's no way to do it. So the way normally we get around it is Builder's API um, action is server side. So if it's server side, Builder's getting that insecure data and then actually sending it to us securely and it's no problem, but we tried to go the client side route for this originally and, and couldn't. Then we ended up building a whole thing to accommodate JSONP and Builder, which is it's cool because now it's in there. But now that's the only way we can actually get that data. And so I, I don't think we'd be able to switch it at this point. I think it's better to, to remove that weight. So Tom, I'm thinking um, we got we have a couple of ways we could go about this and see if it works. We could, if you want, you could show your screen um, and we could just like guide you through doing the duplicate of the function. I think, I think if we're gonna do it, we do a new function and a new action type time together, you know? And actually, what do you guys think, Dorian Drew? Is that how you would go about it? That I would actually like go in there or just uncheck that toggle and try it, right? Just do that. Just because okay. if it because that's Let's all you it. have to do to test it. If it works, then you then maybe go delete the go duplicate the function. But in this case, I doubt that we even need to duplicate the function. That's my hunch. Cool. I think it's, it would work fine for everything. Let's do it. Is that cool, Tom? Or if you want, you could also like share the project with me or Dorian or Drew, and we could go in there and do it if you'd prefer. Yeah, I think that would work. Um, let's see, do I, I, I have it up here. You're going to have to give me, um, let's see. I think you should be able to show. Yeah. Let's see. I think I meant to bring it up, but I didn't. So let me see. Brave. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually there. Uh, I'm just, I'm, my only concern is it might be a little bit noodly to understand, but uh, let's. <laughs> it let's, always is. Uh, you know how it is, right? Let's see us get there. Let's uh, share the screen. Let's do that. There we okay. go. All right. We see well, this it. this is on the user. This is you know the preview side. Yep. You know, so you can see. That station, I'm actually logged into that station. But if I go to uh, like this one down here, I go to 
I know he's offline. He, he's never online mm -hmm. during the day. It's only later. And so I come back over to KB5, and gotcha. you know, nothing happens there. So this is the one I'm using here at the moment. I have a couple other failed attempts, uh, yeah. right? And uh, so there's the status. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, you want to give you? No, you can just, um, on the left side, uh, the studio in the like the panel on the left there's a there's a little arrow it's like an arrow right um and it's called action types it's in the list of menus on the left yeah it's one of those that like, one right there yeah go to that one and then i think it's in the function right yep. so go to yep. functions at the top, top there's functions yeah and then i think it's that first one api call with params yep and that bot, that toggle at the bottom, hold Q until this function completes. Just oh, toggle I, that off. Check it. Never knew that was there. And, and then, then do we have to remove that Q? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, I think Lawrence we probably should. Head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah, I think we should. Say go again. to the go to the JavaScript tab. Yep. And then scroll down to the very bottom. It's usually it's at the line very forty five. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that right you wouldn't know specifically. <laughs> and then, like double or triple click that line and just or hit comment delete. Or you can just do two or, slashes oh, yeah. there you go. and comment it out. Yeah, it's like right in front of it. Oh. Yep. Perfect. Now we're commenting out. Perfect. Yeah, and then hit and save on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm going to do a quick, quick uh, screen save of that. Cool, cool. And uh, pop this over here just so that I don't have to remember later. One second here. Obsidian. Oh uh, yeah. Oh you can see it? Oh okay. I, like <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have guessed too because I knew that you used obsidian. Yeah so. uh, yeah it's it's <laughs> it's sort of a become a kind of a second knowledge base for me. Okay now I do save. I, I yep. double I commented it out. That makes sense. Okay. And, and it's cool. it saved, closed. Yep, so you can just close and go back oh, yeah. to um, the, you should just be able to go back over to the UI now. Yep. And yep, you're good there. And then now, yeah, do that same set of steps you were doing. Okay. Oh, um, now it doesn't want to. Uh... I think you broke it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we might have to get in there and look and see. We could do that. We could do that offline. Uh, well, up, to, my, uh, up to Drew and Dorian. I'm a little out of my depth at this part. So, well, we can we can check really quickly if the action's using the callback or not. And if it is, it might be more complicated. But if not, so in in the screen you're on, actually on the right side, if you just scroll down a little bit, um, yeah, on that action you're on is perfect. And then. Float around success. So yeah, so it's it should be working in theory. So yeah, maybe maybe it's something more complex. I don't know. All right, do you want to, do you want to carry on with this uh, uh, a separate session or? I mean, I'd I'd we'll... wonder if Dorian has more ideas because like I don't I don't I feel like if this were me at this point I could go in and like try a bunch of stuff and be and like you know do some <laughs> slow stuff, but like I don't actually have the exact idea of what I'd try. No, I don't either. It'd just be trial and error at this point. Because in theory, that should have worked. The next thing I would have done is I'd put that back and then try it in separate threads. Because it'll still hold up the queue, but technically, well, I don't know. No, it, it pauses. My, I'm pretty sure the way that the way it does it is when that function goes into the queue, the the queue itself has JavaScript that says stop and it and it like puts everything else that comes. Technically, everything you're doing on the other button clicks it's going to the queue it's not that yeah. the page is actually stuck it's that the queue is being held and queuing up those other actions that's a, my understanding of how it works so yeah. i don't think you'll be able to get around that you know with a thread because it's it's like the higher level the queue is accepting all the threads into it you know right yeah and and he's either running them in parallel or he's pausing it and just queuing all those threads up so yeah. i don't think that'll do it that's the payload back, by the way. That's 
but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we're handling that payload in a crazy way inside a builder actually to remove that uh, function call and like do different things. We're not even actually calling the function. We're just, we're doing some weird stuff. So really it, it could be actually a problem in there too. Like maybe in a normal API call, removing that weight would have worked, but because we're doing this JSON P there's something in there happening. Could be that. All right. Well, I think this is get off in the weeds pretty quick, given the fact that at this point it would take some trial and error from those who know more than me. <laughs> So, um, uh, you know, and I think in fairness to others who have might have a more specific, uh, you know, might have something else, I'm willing to um, yield my time, as they say, uh, and then carry on with you separately on this. Unless yeah, you no got worries. something else in mind you want to try. No, but I do think uh, what Ray mentioned there is probably, it depends on what your UX is. But if you're wanting something that's like continuously polling, it would probably be better to do that somewhere like in the back end. Um, and then that way it's like polling and you're like storing that in data. And then this just goes to the data and gets the most up to date thing every time. You I, know? I thought about that, but um, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not sure how, I, I don't know how to do that in Builder, you know? So yeah. No problem. And and it also depends on the UX, right? Like if you're not wanting to pull it, you're just wanting the user to come in and say, is that online? Yeah. Right. Like if that's what you're wanting to do, then then you don't really need to be doing this like constant polling and updating and all that. It's not really but, necessary. Just when it comes up, it's like these are yellow because they're not online. These are green. So he goes, Oh, okay, I'll click on the green ones. I keep it simple kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. I think the the problem, Abdu, is that the so that the action that would run to stop the other action is in the queue waiting for the other action to run right. you know, to finish and so so like there's no there's no way to get around it in this case because of where that weight is it's like all the way back right you could do what you're describing if the weights were in the action type or in the front in the right. inside the flow then you could yeah you could like run an action in a separate right thread that stops it and, and it would work action. fine yeah yeah, but this this does bring up some good stuff. I I would like to understand why that didn't work. So like we'll go help you figure it out, Tom, because it that should have worked. It should it should basically now go do the thing, don't hold the queue, come back and do whatever it's supposed to do after that, regardless of what's been going on in the meantime. Um, yeah. Well, it's in all fairness, I've tried this on a couple of other systems. Uh, that I don't know as well. And, you know, it's a, it's a brick wall that I've hit in other places. <laughs> but, you know, I figured yeah, I could... That JSON P thing in yeah, itself it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, now we have a broader, you know, scope of things that can be done and you're edging into, you know, real-time control of stuff. So that's not, not a bad market, you know. Yeah, I think it's cool. No worries. Um, all right, well, then I'll loop back with you know, you, Mark, or cool. Drew, or whoever you want me to loop back with, and we'll we'll have a separate uh, yeah. approach to figuring that out. Sounds Thank good. Thank you for your help. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, all right, so Sean Muga was asking about uh, Chrome extension. You want to let us know what the what's going on there? Yeah, uh, thanks. Let me just share my screen. Sure. Okay, so I'm just building out a simple project. Okay, uh, the idea is uh, it's a if, uh, okay, so I'm just going out on YouTube. Okay, so this is an extension that I'm using. Mm -hmm. So it just asks why you are here. Okay, so let's say I put mm -hmm. the testing, and then it just saves it. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I've set a timer for about like a minute or so, after which it just comes back and reminds me that, oh, you know. Uh, you have come here for this. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, what happens is I have to go and select the extension uh, for it to work. Mm -hmm. uh, what I wanted to understand is if a user has installed this extension, uh, can this run automatically for specific sites uh, and pop it up uh, instead of the user having to click every time? Right? Yep. So that is what I want to understand. Yeah, you definitely can. There, and there have been a couple of users who've done this. And, and actually, one of them was specifically doing it on YouTube and then like scraping the data off the 
the video and letting them enter comments and notes and things like that about the YouTube videos that they were watching. It's like for educational stuff. So it's almost identical kind of thing, different use case at the end of it, but identical in terms of like, I need to pop it up specifically on YouTube or specifically on this. Um, and we need to go look at the, the JSON that gets output whenever you export the extension. We can go look at that. And in the JSON file, there's a spot where it um, where you can actually define that information. I would need to go look up real quick the syntax of that. So, you know, when you do the publish and you export, um, you should have it. If you if you installed that uh, extension locally, it should be yeah. what was downloaded before. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, if you open that up, I believe it's going to be in the manifest. If you go go back one, yeah. I think it's in this manifest.json. Yeah. yeah. And Drew, do you remember the syntax already? Uh, I don't actually even know. I just know you can do it. I've never yeah. even done it. I went and looked this up like several months ago for another user. Uh, let me let me look it up on Google real quick. Uh, You're gonna want to open that in like a text editor or something, though. Yeah, it's it's really like a Notepad or like some kind of. Oh yeah, you can do it online. Yeah. I'll or a code fun. editor, really, if you have one. But this will work, I think. think this will have the answer. There you go. Okay, and just open it on the editor. <clears throat> and it's funny, the example I found is actually also for YouTube, <laughs> the Stack Overflow. Um, yeah, it looks like it's fairly straightforward. You might have to do a little bit of uh, back and forth on this, but um, let's see under, um, I think it might be under, well, there's probably two places. If you go under permissions, yeah, I'm just open that one up. All right, so we have act, active tab is fine. And then I think the other one is content scripts. If yeah, that, that content was my scripts. hunch. I think you have to yeah. specify a script to run somehow. Like it might actually be a little complicated, but it's somewhere in it's, here, I'm not sure. It's actually under, yeah, it's under matches. So if you open matches and you right here, we have all URLs and then underneath uh, JS, we have JS, uh, if you open the JS one as well. Yeah, so what it's saying is on all URLs, do this. And when you have all URLs, my understanding is it just, it won't automatically run, right? So if we put, however, a specific match or set of matches in there, and let me, um, I'm gonna copy something and chat it in here to you. Let's see, it should look like this. It's basically an array where it's a string array. Um, so it's in the, should be in the Zoom chat. It's basically like open array bracket string and then the the website that you want, which would be like HTTPS colon slash slash YouTube. So oh, in the, like in the one of, in the one above, in the matches, sorry. Oh, okay. yeah. instead of all URLs there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've replaced all URLs with that. Exactly. Um, and what you can do is if you have another one, you would have after the double quote, you would have a comma and then double quote and then another URL and then close the quote. Exactly. So it'd be like that. Exactly. And I think you have to make sure to do the HTTPS and all of that. Like it's gonna have to be a full URL in there. And that star that's after the slash is saying like every path. So you can actually specify to certain paths in there. So like if you only wanted youtube.com slash, um, I can't remember what the, there's, I think they have like a, a, a certain syntax there for like a specific um, video. You could say only when a certain video opens that way. But if you have the star, it would be on every page of YouTube, it would open. I think this is all you have to 
do. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, cause I think the JS is going to be the same JS, you know, it should be, it needs to match the JavaScript that we're sending. Yeah. And then I think race correct that you don't need the brackets cause it matches already inside of the array. Oh, good call. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I didn't notice that. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in the, um, in there where it says matches, you just remove the brackets from the beginning and end. You actually can't write a comma there on that zero probably too. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, right. Yeah. On the first record zero of that array. So somehow yeah. like really it's like, we're in a weird editor. If you're just typing yeah. like that. Yeah. Like if you look on the left side of the page where it's got the host permissions, all URLs, and it's got the content scripts yeah. matches all URLs, you can see the, the actual string array in there oh, okay. is, is the way that I chatted it to you. Yeah. And I think it's actually the one below that content, uh, content scripts is the one. Yeah. Might that one. Straight. Yeah. So, so like you would put the whole, replace that whole, yeah, bra that whole bracket to bracket with what I chatted, but with any other things you want in there as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I think that's all you would have to do, I believe. I don't think there's anything else. Let me let me just the, double check the- The only other thing you'll need to do if it's not clear is re-upload that, re-add right. the extension. You know, it's not an automatic update when you do this. Yeah. Good call. So yeah, each time you export it, you would have to manually go into this file, make the change, <laughs> and then add it to your browser. Okay. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Uh, the second question I have, and this is a follow-up for this. Uh, in here, I'm specifying the site. Can I specify the list of sites uh, from the extension itself, or can a user uh, use it and uh, it will update the matches in the JSON when we export? No, we don't have a way to do that yet, unfortunately. What you could do is something like, so are you having like the users go, what what would add to that list, I guess? Uh, would let's say Reddit, Facebook, or um, any other sites, which they don't want to spend a lot of time on or want to be reminded. I see. So like where the user has gone and manually clicked it, you want it to automatically come up the next time they come back there? Yeah. Ooh, I don't think, I don't know if that's possible to do because, uh, because Google doesn't let us make this dynamic. There might be a way to do something where we just auto pop it up on every site, but then your pop-up is actually like, just an empty container. That, so it doesn't even look like it popped up. And then you do a check against a builder data collection or something to see if that user has been there before with it. And if they have, then open it up. Um, I can see, oh. Ray mentioned something there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, do do a global permission that mm -hmm. auto opens it. I wonder if let me let me see if I can find something about auto opening on every. Uh, no, I was just looking for like running on every page. It's like everyone limits the page. I mean, it makes sort of some sense from a security perspective that Google might just not let you run on any literally any page. I don't know. Well, I mean, uh -huh. there are some that do, right? I, I know they're like, what's the, what was that big one that um, got, w would find like discounts for shopping online? I'm pretty sure it was running automatically on every page. I mean, maybe they just specified like every online shopping page in their man. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, could do be. that. Like you could technically could in, in this case, like go YouTube, Facebook, like do all the big ones. Like, and then like, if someone does, you know, they can like submit oh. it to you. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'll first try it with uh, YouTube. And uh, as long as it works on uh, YouTube, uh, then if I need enhancements, I'll uh, Honey was the one. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, yeah. Let us know if you, yeah. if you end up needing that. I mean, the, yeah, the way I would, pro the, the, I think I would approach the way Drew did if I couldn't find a way to automatically do it on everyone. Like just go put the top 
20 or 30 that you think, and it's probably going to cover 90% of use case. And then in the UI, rather than popping it up automatically, um, or you can basically then check to see if that user has been there before or not. Like you can do things there to give a different user interface, depending on if they've ever done one before, right? So you just have to store some more information on the back end and have some business logic in there that checks. Sure, yeah. Thanks, Mark and Bro. Thanks so much. Sure thing. Let's see. Um, we can go over any other questions, or we can uh, have some fun talk about some things that we are launching this week or that just came out. If nobody has any other specific questions, cool. Did you launch uh, in Hi. the meantime of today? Because I had some resonance problems with uh, the extension that I'm uh, using, the browser extension, and the resonance didn't work. But now it uh, it seems to be working. So, you know, we have not done an update. But this morning, when Drew and I were on a call, I had that same thing happen. I was making changes, and I was having to refresh my preview, and then I came back later, and it was working too. So something happened earlier today for sure, yeah. and it wasn't just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe Dorian, can you make a note to maybe check with Gigi and see if we can see what's occurring there yeah something it probably got like hung up or blocked and then you know fixed itself and auto you know did something there yeah yeah okay. nice. um yeah i think um let's see drew when were we on between between like 8 30 and 10 uh, yeah it was even a little later it was like between i think 9 15 is when i came okay. online today yeah, it's like 9, it's 15, and 10. Cool. And Alex, happy to answer any questions on custom domains. Awesome, thanks. Um, I hope you guys can hear me because I couldn't get my video working. Uh, okay. Last night, I bought a new domain and just super high level because I've actually worked with you before setting this up. Um, but it's been a while and I know some of the things have changed since we've done it. But I just wanted to know like, high level, how I point a, like my project or a landing page to a custom domain. And then like, like who's hosting that? Is it like, yeah. basically I've got the domain. So then who does the hosting and how do I hook them up? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, the, Hosting kind of depends on uh, like which level you're talking about, right? So yeah. whenever like a client goes to, whenever a browser goes to a certain site, that's going before it ever touches your website or whatever serving the site, it goes through DNS, which like, uh, what did you use for your registrar, like Namecheap or GoDaddy uh, or Google, something? Yeah, Google, Google domains. domains. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So like there's a registration that happens where yeah that... IP address of that um, domain is registered in the DNS with that. So when somebody goes yeah. this website address, it goes to there. And then what you have to do is go into Google and you do another pointer from there that points to your builder site. Right. Right. And so it's like this whole, there's a, there's a whole circle thing there, you know, yeah. like a U yeah. that goes, that goes through yeah. and then it delivers that page to the, to the user. Um, so the way to do that in Builder is you go um, add, you're going to go during a publish process, yeah. um, like say you're going to publish to production. And if it's the first time you've ever published to that uh, deployment, you'll have an option at the top for subdomain or custom domain and okay. it defaults to subdomain. Yeah. Um, so swap that to custom domain. It's just a tab at the top. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you click that, you're going to have two uh, little records that show up automatically. Okay. And one is no uh, subdomain and then the domain. And the next one is like www and then the domain. And you want both of those. So that way, if either one is typed in, it's going to yes. automatically okay. go. Um, so when you fill those in with just your domain name, you can just, you know, whatever.com or whatever.xyz or whatever it is. Yeah. Fill those in. And when you hit uh, next, it's first going to verify in Builder that that domain has not been already registered to another project. So that's sure. like step one. Yeah. 
Then the next step is going to take you through um, showing you uh, the record information that you need to go into Google domains and okay. set up. So I was wondering where to get that info. So that's good to know. Because I was actually yeah. looking, I've got an old, if you remember that, I survived another meeting that should have been, like I've still got yeah. that set up with all the builder <laughs> info. So I couldn't figure out where to get all that. Gotcha, okay, gotcha. Cool. Yeah, it's right there during that process. Okay. And you'll copy and paste those things over. There's little copy buttons on the different yeah. uh, records that you need to create. It should be three records um, that you'll create over in Google domains. Yeah. Um, once you've got them all saved there, you'll still have that publish window up in Builder. And there's a checkbox that says, I've you know created my records in my registrar or something along those lines. Check that box and hit continue. And Builder is actually going to go check to see if okay. it can find those records. Make sure um, they match. Yeah. Yep. And if it finds it, then it'll take you through the next step, which is uh, entering the settings for the SSL, which we auto create. And yep. it's like, what part of the world are you in? You know, certain yep. information like that. And you can honestly, you can put almost anything in there, but it, yep. it doesn't like know what you're doing. It's just part of the registration information. So, like, if somebody goes and looks at the certificate on your site and they click the little uh, lock, yeah, it's going to show in there what some of that information that you type in. So you, you want course, it to be yeah. relevant information, but it doesn't need to be like your street address, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so put okay, all that cool. information in and then continue. It'll go set the SSL up and then it should, the last ones I've been doing, there's like no propagation time. I mean, it's happening like pretty quick. Yeah. in a minute you know like it's cool. by the time i get finished it's already it's already done um but we have seen propagation before too where it takes time just with the registrar and the dns talking to okay. each other so um cool. yeah so that's and if you have any questions or any trouble with it you know hit us up in discord and we can yeah for sure out. thanks no problem i'm not sure if that was also totally clear but it's like there is no hosting that you have to worry about that's yeah. Like the short yeah. answer. So yeah, that yeah builder totally. does all the hosting so you're just pointing your domain to it yeah yeah, cool. And, and those values, I would also add, just since I'm talking, those values, when you set up your domain and you're filling out the, the values, if you're doing a standard domain, they're usually the same, but technically they're custom to your domain. So you don't really have to remember them from an old prep or anything. Like every time you set up a totally. new domain, yeah. it will give you them and just yeah. copy and paste them right from there. You know, it's the safest way. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. And we have had some issues, like one-offs that we can't, we haven't been able to track it all the way down where like certain domains when they get set up during the process it's like the the communication back and forth with the registrar has some issue and it might get trapped like it's happened a few times with different projects where it's almost like the domain state is trapped in this certain state and it can't get beyond it so if anybody ever sees something like that just reach out to us we already have a process to fix it we've had to do it a few times it's real quick we just go in and manipulate the records for that particular domain manually and then you just reset it up and it's worked every time the second time so we haven't been able to figure out exactly what's causing that just heads up there cool all right let's see got a question there trying to hide show a no items found message but grid list rows visible returns null in the page load flow. Outside of that flow, when using a search flow action, it returns correct number of rows. Um, so you're you're trying to find like the number of rows that are visible in the grid in that correct. first thing? Yeah. And what's the method that you're using to, to find that? Like what's, um, the, what's in the action? I do a console log at the moment. <laughs> so gotcha. It, ba it basically does a... Uh... Yeah, it's a whole string of actions, of course, but it does the data binding. Then I call a search in case, well, I remember search, um, uh, what did you say? Yeah, search, re search input, I rem do remember in a, a variable. So I rerun the search in case that's necessary. And mm -hmm. then it, when it returns basically back to the page load, I'll check if there's uh, a result in the grid. And if not, then no items found, a message should pop up, but it's always showing because uh, could, because there's no uh, return so um, it could be if you're using in the part where you're checking the grid where in it and you're doing like from this element value in there if you do get value 
that's going to check the display. So like whatever is already mm -hmm. rendered. If you choose get data, that's going to check the actual underlying data, regardless of where yeah. the UI is at. So you want to make sure and use rows data. visible though, right? You're, are you doing like the search results or yeah. whatever that one's called? So it's, it's not data. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Search results should be, uh, if it's the search results one, then that should be working from data minus the, you know, filtered by the search, by the search. So that should be finding it. Um, yeah. If you're, if you're using from, I think it's called search results, right? Search results data or something like that is the option. I can show you what I have. Yeah, I think the data will probably be the, or well, no, I guess it is search results, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he wants it searched, right? And it should yeah. be, search results data should be, um, okay. my understanding of the way it back. works is it, it pulls the data itself. And so it should, mm -hmm. I mean, at worst, it would be like the whole data set, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, I would expect of it. This is, ex when I do the, I'll show you the effect and I'll show you the code. Sure. Yeah. It's the refresh. So it instantly comes up with the you no know, items found and a results list. And then when I do the search in there, there's also this check where it's the PUC, it disappears. Mm -hmm. So the functionality works, uh, but in a way it doesn't in this flow. Now, when we look at the. And if you type something in wrong there to where it would find nothing, like put yeah. in a, you know, a set a word that, yeah. Okay. So it does get to that. State. Yeah. 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 It's definitely timing then. Yeah, that's what, that's why yeah, I wanted I think to see like, timing right. as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's look at that. Um, what's happening in the page load there? Let's see, it's this one. Yeah. Okay. I'll close this. Yeah. Uh, All right. So guys out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And so we'll set focus. Um, this has to do with the yeah kind of panel that should be popping up then in here uh, this is the search result it gets saved to a variable so i can reuse it later when i do page transitions i need to uh, put it back in mm -hmm. um, then we do a sort kind of the same thing happening there then the page binding uh, then the search which is actually using that uh, search input mm -hmm. to do the search um, this is again storing that search result, and then there's this no items found check. And yeah, I know that on the probably should be length uh, uh, behind it, but it's uh, it'll it would still work, I think. Because it was yeah. visible. Is there a different option besides rows visible that search yeah, results? Or is it, I, I think check search it. result data might be actually what you want. Yeah, yeah, I would try search result data, but also we could we can do something else here too. Uh, but let, let's try search result data there and check you, for length or I I think you don't need to because it's going to return an array, you know, and it'll <laughs> the greater than zero will will work because it's going to find a string a string inside of an array, you know. Yeah. Um, Still there. I would put length in there anyways, just because then it's you know like what, if you ever debugged it, it would be you know quantity, you know, it'd be like a numeric value. Um, but I think to solve it fully, we want to do something a little bit different here. Mm -hmm. Um, so go ahead and add the path in there for the length, just so that way we finish that piece out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And okay. So what, the way that I think we need to do this, there's actually another I think now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think we have it defaulted in the grid. I, there's another event on a grid that's literally called after search. Oh, cool. And you can run a flow after a search has been completed. If you do it that way, the timing will never get off. So it's after search camel case. So lowercase a capital S. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's after search. I might have to go look and <laughs> Maybe Dorian, can you make a new, hidden option? <laughs> can you? I totally forgot about it until right now. Dorian, can you make a note? Never knew about it. <laughs> and so you want to make a new flow, and then like copy that after search stuff into there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we can do it. Uh, let's see. We can do a quick uh, 
just to see if it's working. I can hide it because we see it now constantly. Yeah. So if it works, it go. should be it should be hidden. Yeah, no. I, I think I have the name right. <laughs> I might have it wrong too. I'll tell you Could what. I'll go. I'll go find out after the call. Yeah. But there, there is an after search because I had to use this. I can't remember what project it was and we it was a long time ago and we actually added that the code for it but i think we never added the event by yeah. default um so yeah we can go we can get all that and it could cool. be too yeah but that will work for sure because I've, I've had to do this exact problem where yeah. i like i can't get the timing right you know um and yeah. i don't like to use timers of like wait half a second or something you don't you know you know the problems with doing things like that so um yeah i think dorian we should probably go get that like figure that out get it included in this release because it'll take five seconds to add that to the grid yeah, yeah. It to my list, so yeah cool thanks cool. yeah no worries i'll wait for the answer yep and um i think abdu had a question on yeah outputting grid json to a variable yeah yeah, how's it going? How's it going? Uh, do you mind if I share the screen? No, please. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So basically, I'm just uh, building, trying to reach that autosave thing uh, from the grid. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening is uh, this is the front end, basically. So within this uh, grid, I have this block, which is a text block. Mm -hmm. um, and only on the event when the text is changed, basically, like I'm outputting the JSON here, mm -hmm. as you can see. Uh, now, one thing I've noticed is that, like, it's uh, attached to the key up event, but then if I like write other things here, it's not updating this anymore, mm -hmm. uh, and basically the variable is is not updated, so I can't really save the one here. And even if I come back to it and then try to write a few things. Uh, it's always the same, like the value is, is just uh, there uh, as it was, basically. And the process that's happening there is on, on key up, you set a current page variable with that value, and then you run after that something in the parent that grabs the whole grid? Yeah, so what I'm doing is, is basically on the key up here, I would run an external flow within this grid page. Mm -hmm. That would basically get the the great uh, JSON. Can, can we look at that? Yep. Um, so the text box is here. Okay. So that's the event, which is basically to uh, run a flow. Um, on the other page. I think before you run that run flow on other page, so like right here in this in this flow, but above the run flow on page action. Mm -hmm. The first thing you want to do is actually set the current page variable with the value that's in the, the thing you're changing. Okay. So, I see. Because, and you need it to match whatever the, you know, whatever the variable name is, just set that variable again with that value. Okay. And then that way, because what's happening when you, when you get the value out of the grid, um, it's just grabbing all the current page variables of each row as the property values. And mm -hmm. so, if it's if you don't update that it doesn't actually like it doesn't automatically bind that element back to the variable you know what i mean I, yeah so you need to set that manually here i bet that's the only problem okay got it once got you it. do that okay. it'll do it automatically yeah. if you, if you want to do it right now we can just make sure you know um sure i just uh, do want to take the last couple of uh, minutes uh, i think someone else had a question as well so, no problem we can we can stick around for a few extra minutes and get to everyone. So, well, I'm just trying to remember the variable name. I think it was. Uh, there you go. Then... Yep. Nice. Yep. So, current page, perfect. And then pull that out of that element, the same one. <clears throat> yep. And then put a wait after the set variable. Yep. And try that. That should get it. All right. Let's go here. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, there That's you go. Fine. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Awesome. Oh, I see Jerome got it working. Cool. So it was just the set to the wrong element. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My that mistake. happens. No worries. <laughs> No worries. Cool. We'll get that after search event defaulted in there too. So that way it's yeah, obvious really to everyone. Handy. Yeah. Nice to have. <laughs> um, cool. So on the extension, uh, it works for YouTube. Um, as the users still need to click the extension every time. Um, it should do that. Uh, well, it's just saying auto pop up. I, I don't know if it'll auto pop up just from what we did. It can I share? It should have. Uh, can I share the screen and? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please. So uh, I I made the change. Okay. So what has happened is. Uh, this, this. Okay. So. Okay. So this is it. Okay. Uh, so it works on YouTube. Okay, so I don't know why this is pushing. I just checked the behavior. Okay, let me just. Uh, this is the before. Okay. Oh, it won't. It, yeah, it won't run from extensions. Like if you click the extension, Google won't let any extensions run from inside there. It's like if you click it from up there. Cool. So, okay. So this was my browser. So if I enter YouTube, let me say I just put this. Yep. Yeah, my understanding is that should have already popped up. And yeah. I can read and I can reach out to that user because we did get this working for it specifically for YouTube for another user. And it literally just auto pops up whenever you go to YouTube. Yeah. That's so how. yeah, that the uh, so must be some other setting in there that I'm not remembering. It was a while ago, um, but that's what you want, right? That's the, the behavior yeah. you want is like, go to YouTube and it just shows up and anything yes. in that list, yeah. just pop it. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me do a little bit more research and I'll message you on okay, sure. Discord. And um, yeah, if you want to DM me too on Discord and maybe send me the JSON file. Um, sure. Or actually, just send a zip of the whole extension if you could. Okay, sure. And that way, I can kind of like play with it, you know. <laughs> and so yeah. What, what can I you? add you to the project or? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's just Market Builder. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm also learning. So I'm just I will figure out how to. Add. Yeah. No worries. I'm sure we'll figure it out. There's probably just like another setting in there, but I know that Chrome gives you a way to do this exact thing. Like it's, it's part of it. And it's something that we want to build into the UI. So eventually it's just where you go method, you know, display method. And it's like pop up or new tab right now. We want a third one in there for like auto open where you define <laughs> the set of them. And then it's just all automated. But, uh, but yeah, chat me the, um, uh, the zip like file. Yeah. yeah. And I can go take okay. a look. Yeah. Thanks, man. Cool. Cool. All right, man, that's exactly an hour right now. <laughs> Cora would be super proud of that, honestly. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for coming today and we'll be in Discord as always. So let us know um, and Tom, we'll get in touch and we'll see if we can figure out what to do with that action to get it to let it, I'm sure there's a method to get it to not of course okay it. i'll i'll edge the project and uh cool. and
and, inqu- and include some notes so you don't have to try to go dig it up and find it somewhere else. So, Perfect. That, thank right. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Good rest of the week.